Hey guys, it's Stacy from My Petite Garden. Thank you so much for watching this video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about my terrarium greenhouses that I have around my home. Um, I've gotten some questions from you guys regarding them and I figured I'd just make one video and highlight everything all at once for you. So I hope you guys enjoy and as always, thank you so much for watching and for all of your support and let's get into the video. Alright guys, so we're going to start off with this terrarium that I have on the windowsill in my living room. This one is from Amazon and I believe this was the first terrarium greenhouse that I got. Um, the look of this is something that I really like and appreciate. I love metal frame terrariums with glass panels and I believe this type of terrarium is called like a wardian case terrarium and um, the design of it is just beautiful. Uh, the top part of it is really intricate. Um, it is a little bit sharp so you do have to be careful. Now the nice thing about this particular terrarium is that the top comes off completely so you could just lift the whole top off and then place in your plants, move them around however you want and then you can put the top back on. So there's no restrictions as with some other terrariums where you have to kind of work with the opening that they provide. Um, this also has a little window as you can see here that you can keep open if you like. Moisture retention in the terrarium is pretty good, um, which is a good thing. So you'll notice that inside this terrarium I do have a sticky trap and sometimes I do put them inside the terrariums because of the higher humidity environment. It does kind of encourage fungus gnats and they love this type of wet um, humid environment so I put it in there sometimes just to catch any that happen to be around to just kind of prevent them from reproducing. So one of the things that I get asked the most is how do I decide what plants to put inside an enclosure? Um, and my simple answer to that is that when I notice that a plant that I've had for a while just has not been growing or putting out any new growth, especially Hoyas, um, I will tend to put them inside a terrarium to see how it would do and 90% of the time it would help promote new growth and that is the main reason why I put certain plants in terrariums. At other times, it's just literally me wanting to experiment and test out whether a plant will grow better inside a higher humidity environment. So most of the time, it's literally just trial and error for me and that is how I go about a lot of my um, plant care and plant maintenance. So in this terrarium, I have my Hoya palita that you see here and my Hoya acuta red leaves. The reason I put the Hoya palita inside the terrarium was because it wasn't growing much and I've had it for a while. It only had like four leaves on it. So as you can see now, once I put it in this terrarium, it literally exploded in growth, which made me really happy to see. Over here is my Hoya Acuta red leaves. Um, you can see that shiny leaf there is a new growth and you can also see another new growth coming in as well. Um, so this one I actually put in um, when I got it just to see how well it'll grow and it actually did pretty well. Another great thing about this particular terrarium is that the bottom tray portion does have a plastic slip that protects um, any water from getting onto the metal part.
This next one here is from Pottery Barn and I think this might be the most popular one with you guys because I do get a lot of questions regarding this. Um, so this terrarium is a taller type of terrarium. It's in a hexagon shape and it does have a lot of space for you to work with. This is probably one of my favorite terrariums that I have um, and because of the height of it, I can put some taller plants in here as well. So the plants that I put in here is usually an assortment of different types of plants. Some that I'm trying to promote new growth, some I just wanted to see how they do inside the terrarium. So it's constantly on rotation and the plants that are in this terrarium are rotating constantly. Um, and once I see a plant doing better, I will take it out of the terrarium and replace it with another plant. So it's, it's fun to just kind of experiment with this. The top of the terrarium does completely open up, so you have a lot of um, space to work with. You don't have to worry about it being constricted. So you can just kind of open up the top completely and just put in your plants however you want, move them around as you like. This one here is from Amazon and it sits on my wall plant shelf. This one is not too big, um, but it can hold about two smaller plants or one larger plant um, very comfortably. And I love the design of this. It has that warty and case look again to it. And it does have a little cute knob here that you can open up the terrarium. And again, you can keep this open as well if you like. Um, I always prefer terrariums that have wider openings so that I don't have to struggle with putting in the plants that I want. Um, and in this case, this is a very good, nice opening for me to work with and it's a beautiful design as well. This next one here is a house-shaped terrarium that I got from Pottery Barn. It is nestled on the top level of my IKEA shelf. So this one is a lower but wider type of terrarium and it also has that nice metal frame with the glass panel. I am able to fit three plants in here comfortably. The top of this terrarium also opens up completely, so it has a very wide opening that you can work with. Um, put your plants in however you like, move them around very easily.
So another thing that I do with terrariums is I do uh, do a light misting before I close the terrarium, especially if I know that the terrarium is not the most airtight. So that way I can keep some moisture or additional moisture inside. This next one here is from Pier 1 and it is probably the largest terrarium that I have. The design of this is absolutely stunning. Um, it actually mimics a conservatory really nicely and the top of this terrarium comes completely off so you can lift the whole thing up and then just place in your plants and then put the top back on. So in this terrarium, currently I have three Hoyas in here, but you can really fit a lot in here. I think at one point I had about five or six plants in here, um, but as they grew bigger and larger, I had to remove some of them out. And these are the three that are still in here. And I think after filming this, I might remove one more um, just to see if it's ready to be outside of the terrarium and see how well it will grow. This Hoya Acuta heart shape that you see here was not doing anything for the longest time so I finally threw it inside a terrarium and you can see it started producing that new stem there so that's really exciting for me and I can't wait to see um, it put out some new growth. So a negative about this particular terrarium is that the bottom tray is actually made of wood which is not ideal for you know having a high humidity environment. So what I did was I lined it with a um, window screen mesh that's sticky so that the bottom portion is now protected a bit. So that is all the terrariums that I have. Now I just want to just briefly talk to you guys about the cloches that I use on some of my plants. This particular one you see here is from Ikea and then the one in the back there, the taller one, is from Amazon. I get my cloches from all different places wherever I can find them. Um, a lot of times I even just use kind of glass vases and just kind of flip them around to use them as a cloche for my plants and they work just as well. Here is an example where I used a glass vase as a cloche for my plants. This particular one is from TJ Maxx. Here I have a cloche that I got from Pottery Barn. Um, I really like this one because it is pretty significant in height. So you can put a taller plant here or let a plant grow as tall as it can inside of here and not worry about having to take it out. Um, I love this one because it looks kind of like an egg, so it's like an egg-shaped um, cloche and I think it's really cute. And it does have a glass bottom, which is really nice. Next to it is a uh, another glass vase that I got from I believe either Marshalls or TJ Maxx and I just kind of flipped it around and used it as a cloche.
Over here is one of my, if not the tallest, glass cloche that I have. This one is from Pottery Barn. Um, it's really tall so you can put a pretty tall plant in here and that's the reason why I actually got it. The negative about this one is that the base is wooden so again it will have you know that problem with moisture at some point um you'll see here that mine actually cracked and i'm not sure if that's from the moisture or if at some point i kind of knocked it or dropped it i don't really recall but i think i will need to kind of protect it with something at some point Here is a small little cloche for one of my small plants. This one is the same one as the IKEA one in my bedroom that I showed you guys. Um, and this one is also from IKEA, it's just the smaller size. I love cloches that have that little knob at the top where you can use to lift the cloche up um, because it makes it a lot easier to handle without you know worrying about dropping the cloche. Over here is another IKEA one. This one comes with a base. The base is metal. Um, and this is, I would say, a medium height one. Um, you can put a significant plant in here and it should be able to grow in here for a long while. So this last one that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today is uh, one that my husband actually picked up for me at a sample sale for really really cheap I think it was just a few bucks um, I love this cloche it has a glass bottom and it's like a wider version wider but shorter version of the egg cloche that I showed you guys um, in my bedroom and this one is great I can fit quite a bit in here and I love the way it looks and again it has that little top knob that you can easily lift the um, cloche up. guys so that's it for this video i really hope you enjoyed it and as always if you have any more questions please feel free to leave them in the comments down below and i'll definitely get back to you um, if you haven't already please make sure to comment like and subscribe i really really appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video bye